Alright, this uh, movie is on the topic of impulse. And I want to open up with a question. What's the difference between the following scenarios? Say you're in a car, and we're going 20 meters per second, so about 60 miles per hour. And driving, driving, driving. And then we come to a stop. In scenario number one, you gently press the brake. In scenario number two, you slam the brakes. In scenario number three, uh, I'll say we run into a wall at full speed. Now in each scenario, I want you to compare the force applied to stop the car and the time it takes to stop. And, in the, and for each one I want you to label it small, medium, or large. For example, when you gently press the brakes, compared to slamming the brakes and hitting a wall, the force is very small. What about the stopping time? So compare them to the other two. So pause the video and try to fill this out. Here's the answers. The stopping time, it takes a long time to stop. As compared to the other two, it takes the longest. When you slam on the brakes, the force is bigger than here, but not as big as hitting the wall head on. So we're going to call this one medium. And the stopping time is less than here, but you don't stop as quickly as when you hit the wall. So this is both medium. The force here is um, large, and the stopping time happens almost immediately, so it's the smallest. And this idea of changing the momentum of something, making it come to a stop, and the force applied and the time it takes is called impulse. Three different ways to stop something, three different impulse forces, and impulse time. that. Okay, here's your definitions. Impulse is a force applied over time to change momentum. The P means momentum of an object. Now this could be Changing the momentum by speeding it up, increasing momentum, would be an example of like force from the engine. That would be an impulse force to change momentum, to speed to change, to increase it. But it could also be decreasing momentum. This would be like a force on the brakes, to slow something down. So it doesn't just have to be stopping, it could also be speeding up. The formula is impulse equals change in momentum force times time is impulse equals change in momentum and just a reminder change in momentum is momentum times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial. So you could also say force times time equals this stuff. So let's try some examples. First thing I want you to do is make a list of everything you know. Don't solve anything, just try to make a list. So pause the video. You don't have to copy this down, but do try to make a list we're practicing um, our math setup because we've been writing a lot. So here's the first thing I know is I want to find force. Must be applied to decrease the object's momentum. So this is actually 
a change in momentum. I don't know what the momentum started at or finished, but I know the momentum changed by 600 kilogram meters per second. And then time equals two minutes. However, check this out. Momentum is in kilogram meters per second, so time must also be in seconds. So 2 minutes times 60, minutes times 60 is 120 seconds. Now I'm ready to solve. Force times time equals change in momentum. Force times 120 equals 600. Divide by 120. Force equals 5 newtons. Okay, one more example. What if we have a car starting at 10 meters per second? It's a 500 kilogram car. And it speeds up to 20 meters per second. How much did momentum change? So look back at your formulas. How do you solve this? How do you find change in momentum? Give it a shot. Pause the video if you're not sure. Change in momentum equals mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial. So now try to solve it. Here's your answer. 500 times 20 minus 500 times 10. Initial, final. So this would be uh, 10,000 minus 5,000 equals the change in momentum was a difference of 5,000 kilogram meters per second. Alright, there's some practice problems.